Hereby excommunicate all of you. I'm excited to go laugh about it and I say, fine, it's fine, cool. Great. Sorry. <laughs> Look at that, the camera, big smile. Sorry, were you recording already at that time? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, snap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, Josh, that one's for you. No, 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 no. All right, I deserve that. in life teen land it's mark and we're here with episode number seven of the mix seven is a holy number seven you got your seven sacraments you got your seven gifts of the holy spirit you got your seven character dwarves with the snow white girl today we're gonna be taking a look at the saints the holy ones the hallowed ones if one will if you might the hallowed ones why do we hallow the saints because they deserve it. Not because they desired it, because they deserved it. Because these are the men and women we look up to in our family of faith, the communion of saints, the ones who live their life in such a radically loving way that we look to them now as these, these aspirations, look at them as these role models, these mentors for us in the faith, because we're still united with the saints. People are like, Why are you Catholic? Pray to dead people. We don't pray to dead people. We pray with living people because... Aren't the people in heaven even more alive than we are? Because we're the ones still being affected by sin down here. Those in heaven, those who have gone before us, they're far more alive than we are. And that's why their intercession, them praying on behalf of us, is so important. Sometimes people get all freaked out and they're like, Well, if you're going to a saint, you can't be going to Jesus. Yes, you can. You see, because a saint's intercession is a secondary intercession. What's happening is, as you go to the Lord with your prayers, you're saying, Hey, I'm going to ask this saint who has this specific um, patronage, this specific kind of like life lesson, this virtue, I'm going to go ask them to pray with me. I'm going to ask that saint I was confirmed under their name, to pray with me. I'm going to ask the, the, the saint I'm named after to pray with me. The saint who went through the same struggle to pray with me and to come with me as I place my prayers at the feet of the Lord, who is the primary intercessor. But we're not going to get so deep into all the saint catechetical doctrine stuff today. We're actually just going to have a lot of fun. You're probably really tired from consuming way too much candy last night. So we've asked four of our staff members, Sarah, Miranda, Rachel, and Jose, to walk you through several different pieces of trivia and interesting facts about the saints, the holy ones, the hallowed ones who went before us. Have a little fun. I'll talk to you at the back end. Welcome everyone. We're so glad you've chosen to join us this evening to celebrate the saints. My name is Sarah Hood. I serve as the director of events for Life Teen here in Georgia, and I am joined by the lovely Miranda Banowitz, who is our coordinator of digital evangelization. We also have two of our friends and coworkers from Arizona joining us for this episode. We have Jose Rodriguez Rivera, our life support coordinator, and Rachel Pinate, our assistant to our executive vice president. So the four of us are are excited to be playing a game with you tonight. We are celebrating the saints because today is the Solemnity of All Saints. Ooh. Solemnities are the highest form of feast day that we celebrate in the church. There's only a handful of them throughout the year, and today, November 1st, the Solemnity of All Saints is one of them. So a great reason to celebrate, a great reason to have some fun. Here's how this is going to work. We're going to play a little trivia, but each round of trivia will be hinting at a mystery saint. So there are going to be four rounds, four mystery saints for you to guess. There will be four trivia questions in each round, and each of those will be a hint for who the mystery saint of the round is. You'll have 30 seconds to answer each trivia question, and then at the end of the four questions, we'll give you a little time to guess the mystery saint. You will get 10 points for each correct trivia question, 25 points for each correct mystery saint. So you can get... Four questions, four rounds, 10 points each, 160 points for the trivia questions, 25 times four, 100 extra points for the Mystery Saints, a grand total of 260 points if you get everything correct. If you do, I want to hear about it because that's really impressive. So that's your maximum amount of points that you can get, 260. You're going to be keeping track of points on your own. So you'll want to grab a paper or a pen and pencil and some friends. So if you're not already gathered together with your youth group or some friends, go ahead and click pause, get some friends to join you, or you could play on your own and see how great of a score you can get and be sure to let us know. There is one rule. You cannot Google. Everybody knows that Googling during trivia is cheating. Use your own brain. Do not resort to our friend Google. No. That's it. 
So we hope you're ready to play with us as we celebrate the saints. I kind of think maybe we should give them a free hint about yes. our mystery saints. Yes, I would love to give them a hint. The hint that I'm going to give you is that all of these saints we're talking about today are teenagers like you. Teenagers, that's your hint. All four saints of our mystery saint rounds, teenagers. So without further ado, Jose and Rachel, take us away with round one. Thanks, Sarah and Miranda, for that introduction. Hey, Jose. Madam. Speaking of teenage saints, did you know a recent teenager named Carlos Acutis was beatified on October 10th? Yes, super uh, gorgeous looking mask from the pictures that I saw. It yeah. Was really amazing. Yeah. Yeah, they awesome. honored him for, I think, a few weeks yeah. um, after his beatification mass. But Carlo was a really cool kid. He was born in 1991, which I think is close to our birth dates. So he's super close. young. Pretty close. Super young, yeah. right? He was diagnosed with leukemia in his teens and went through this great time of suffering. But because he was an extraordinary kid, he offered that time up for the church and the Pope. He offered his suffering up for the church and the Pope. Um, he also, really cool, was a computer programmer. He really loved computers. And so his love for the Eucharist, he took that to the computer and he created websites of Eucharistic miracles. Who does that? Yeah, like this kid does. Goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Carlo is a great saint to look up and to learn more about. One of my favorite quotes from him, he was known for having said, all people are born as originals, mm. but die as photocopies. Uh, talk about gut punch. For real. Yeah. Ooh, How are we living the original Christian life? How are we living our life as unique creations of God? Like, cool, cool kid. So Carlo, acutus, Italian. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Not gonna lie, one of my favorite things about Carlos Acutis is that he, he loved video games and he wore Nikes. Oh, yeah. Which for me is like, oh my God. Like, I really do have a chance. Like, this is great. Like, my mom Seriously. walks into my room as I'm w rocking the Air Force Ones and playing Final Fantasy, and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm just like, oh, nothing. Just trying to achieve sainthood over here. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Look mom. Look at me, mom. Look at me go. I'm doing what I gotta do. Oh, man. Okay, so we're gonna get started with uh, a couple of our trivia questions so that we can figure out maybe who our mystery saint is. Yes. So let's go, round one. Do? Let's do it, round one. Here we go, question number one. So, the modern iteration of pizza was said to be invented in what Italian city? Is it A, Naples? Is it B, Rome? Is it C, Turin? Or D, Milan? Ooh. Jose. Yes, ma'am. What's your favorite kind of pizza? Uh, Undoubtedly, it's Hawaiian pizza. Yes! Okay, okay. The Hawaiian pizza is so hated, but so underrated. I don't understand its hate. I really, really don't because it's just delicious. It's no. had all of the things. Hawaiian pizza. Man. Oh my god. All right, what's the answer, Jose? Uh, it, it is said that pizza actually originated in Naples. Naples, Naples Italy. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Absolutely. It's all right, stuff. question number two. What basilica in Turin, Italy, was originally part of a home for poor boys founded by St. John Bosco? Was it the Basilica of John Bosco, the Basilica of Corpus Domini, the Basilica of Our Lady Help of Christians, or the Church of the Virgin of the Consolation? It's quite the name. It's, just, it's a little long. Yeah, no, it's a mouthful. Oh my gosh. I was just saying, this mystery saint is actually friends and was mentored by St. John Bosco. That's cool. Like Catholic saints. I love it. They all know each other. Apparently. All right. The answer, <laughs> they do all know each other. In heaven, too, right now. The answer to that is the Basilica of Our Lady Help of Christians. Question three. Question number three. All right. This mystery saint's feast day and. National Teacher Day falls on what date? Is it March the 6th, April the 6th, May the 6th, or June 6th? Has something to do with 6th, I'm guessing. Something along those lines, yeah, absolutely. Uh, did you know that uh, uh, what is Saint, Saint, uh, Saint Cultitude, she is actually the patron of disappointing children. Oh. Yeah, and my mom was oh. a teacher, so I'm sure that's the uh, I love it. Saint that she prayed to uh, most often. often. <laughs> the answer? The answer is actually May 6th. That's right. Love it. May 6th. Love it. 
All right, question number four. This mystery saint was a choir boy, and the world famous Vienna Boys Choir was founded in what year? Was it 1798, 1698, 1598, or 1498? But mm. you couldn't see that coming. Not at all. <laughs> Were you ever in a church choir? Uh, yeah, I was. What? Yeah, I also uh, would, like did the, the singing from the pulpit too. That is awesome. Yeah. I never did that. I didn't have the courage, but I was an altar boy. No. Until like I was a senior in high school, which Solid. is entirely too long to be an altar boy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure you had fun. It, was, it wasn't bad. It wasn't terrible. And the answer was 1498. All right. All right, so what do we know about our mystery statement? Indeed, so let's break down a little bit. So clearly this person was Italian and we get that yeah, from the definitely. you know the Italian pizza, pizza question. Yeah. You know, their mm -hmm. feast day was on May the 6th and they were indeed a choir boy, so we know that it is indeed. And, and they knew St. John Bosco. They knew St. John Bosco mm -hmm. and they have something to do with the Basilica of Our Lady Help of Christians. All right, so I, that's a good amount of a, a clues there, I think, so let's Let's see, so our mystery saint is indeed Saint Dominic Savio. Hey. All right, Josh, you can insert the little reggae horns here. Bow, bow, bow. All right. <laughs> um, born in, in Italy in 1842, Saint Dominic Savio, uh, he actually received his first communion at the age of seven when normally they were given communion at age 12, but his parish priest was so crazy impressed with his knowledge about the faith, knowledge about the Lord, and, and just the piety that he showed that he made an exception. And, and piety is this overwhelming sense of reverence for God, for his church, and for his church teachings. And what's really cool about St. Dominic is that he continued to show piety on that day when he received communion, and he described it as one of the best days of his life. And with that, he actually made four promises in his journal. He said, I will go to confession often, as frequently as I can. Mm -hmm. Now I'll receive Holy Communion as often as I can. He says that he's gonna wish to sanctify uh, the Sundays and festivals in a very special manner. He promised that he's gonna be friends, which I love, friends with Jesus and Mary. And mm -hmm. he promised death rather than sin. Oof. Which for like, Oof. oh man, like a young man to say is amazing to me. So after he gained uh, admittance to St. Josh, John Bosco's uh, school for boys, he became an excellent student. But, you know, kind of like me, he, he found himself in a little bit of trouble in school. So at one point, uh, he, a couple of his classmates uh, actually pulled a big prank and afraid that they were gonna be expelled, what happened is that they blamed it on St. Dominic Savio. Mm. And so when he was questioned about the incident, St. Dominic actually said, well, nothing and he took the blame. After, you know, the next day, once the actual culprits were, were, were found and then the teacher was requesting, I was like, yo, why didn't you say anything? And he said that, well, he remained silent because Jesus remained silent when he was falsely accused. Wow. Which is, man, something else. And after continuing his studies in school, shortly after he became sick and he became pretty ill and he was actually sent back home. And one of the interesting things about St. Dominic is that he was so sure so sure of his impending death that he asked his parents to go grab a priest so that he could go to confession and receive the anointing of the sick. And then after asking his father to, to read to him the, the exercise of a happy death, he fell asleep. And after a few hours of him falling asleep, he actually woke up and he said to his father, he said, goodbye, father. I love you, goodbye. Oh, what wonderful things that I see before falling back asleep again and then dying a few short minutes thereafter. St. Dominic, he used this beautiful, lovely gift of piety, his reverence for God, and he relied on God with just trust and, and, and humility and love that we should all really aspire to. And then lastly, his body was then taken to his final resting place, where? At the Basilica of Our Lady of Help of Christians. It's beautiful. Yeah. Love it. Love it. All right, well, that concludes round one, and we'll send it off to you, Sarah and Miranda. One of the things I love about the saints is the variety of saints that we have in our church. There are so many saints who had so many different life stories that there's just something inspirational for everyone, no matter who you are or what you love, there's someone that you can find, a saint in our church, that's inspirational. And I just think that's really awesome and provides a richness in our faith. 
I also love all of the different traditions that we have in the church of celebrating saints. So, you know, there's some kind of crazy ones and some interesting ones and some fun ones. But one of the ones that my family celebrated when I was younger was St. Lucia's feast day. And I'm not entirely sure where this tradition comes from, but the tradition is that St. Lucia's feast day is in December, the time of year when you like to bake and stuff. Oh, yeah. And uh, the oldest daughter in the family, which would be me, only daughter, all brothers. Uh, the oldest daughter gets up early in the morning, dresses in a white dress or gown, and bakes cinnamon buns for the family. And ideally brings them, you know, breakfast in bed, cinnamon buns. I never really woke up early enough to do that for my family, <laughs> so they were awake already. But the coolest part of the tradition, and I think the reason why I loved it, is uh, you put a wreath of candles on your head when you do this. Oh. So it was like a balancing act, you know, built the little wreath, put some white candles in it, placed it on my head like a little crown and made cinnamon buns for the family and brought them to them. I did not light these candles. I feel like that would have been a little bit of a fire yeah, hazard, you know. Not in hairspray. But uh, good memories. Not sure why we do that on St. Lucia's feast day, but it's a fun little tradition to celebrate St. Lucia. Yeah. Did you have any like childhood saint celebrations, dressing up as a saint or anything like that? Yeah, I feel like I got cheated out of that one. I'm the <laughs> yeah. oldest girl and I didn't know about it. Yes, um, you could do it now. I could do it now. Maybe. All right. Um, but I do, I do have a fun story. I didn't deliberately dress up as a saint, but when I was younger, um, my Grammy used to make all my Halloween costumes and she made me a Hershey's Kiss outfit. Oh my gosh, but it was adorable. Oh, it was so cute. It had like stuffing. This was when I was at my peak. I was like four years old. <laughs> and um, the night before, the party, we found out you had to dress up as a saint and she, she did not have enough time to make me a new outfit. So she made me a sash that said St. Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> and that I was St. Christopher. St. Christopher. St. Christopher. Before. Love awesome that. For the That's party. That's fun. It's pretty cute. Great childhood memory. Oh, yeah. Love it. Awesome. Well, I think we should maybe get into round two of trivia, our Let's second mystery saint. We've got our four trivia questions slash hints for you of our second mystery saint. Here is your first question slash hint. Italy has quite a few mountain ranges in their little country. Which of the following is not one of the mountain ranges in Italy? The Alps, the Pyrenees, the Apennines, or the Dolomites? Have you been to any of these mountains, Miranda? I flew over the Alps. Mm, beautiful. Very pretty. Love flying um, over mountain ranges. Yeah, I was on a sketchy airline, so that brought me peace to see the snowy mountains. That's good. Tops. My <laughs> experience with the Alps is that my first time downhill skiing was in the Alps. I just want you to imagine how that turned out. Amazing. The Alps are, in fact, in Italy. So the answer to this question is B, the Pyrenees. If you guess the Pyrenees, you get 10 points. Woo! And uh, that is a hint that this person is from a mountain town. So let's jump into number two. Um, my favorite thing, espresso drinks are, in Italy, are the perfect pair. So how many espressos do Italians consume each year? Is it 11 billion, 17 billion, 10 billion or 14 billion? That is a lot of coffee. It I is. feel like you could consume a couple billion espressos yourself in the course of a year or two. Yeah. You do love coffee. I already had two cups this morning. Hence the energy. Yes. Yeah, that's where my energy. I, I do love work. a good espresso in Italy. <laughs> it's good. It's good. And the answer to this question is that it's 14 billion espressos. Do you know who the patron saint of coffee is, Miranda? Um, it is Saint Drogo. We learned about him a couple episodes ago in the mix. He's also the patron saint of unattractive people. So there you have it, Saint Drogo, patron saint of unattractive people and coffee. Question three. <laughs> Strawberries are considered a fashionable food during the summer in England. They're perfectly in season for the Wimbledon tennis tournament and have become its trademark food. How many tons of strawberries are ordered for this tennis tournament every year? 16 tons, 24 tons, 43 tons, or 27 tons. That's a lot of strawberries. A ton is 2,000 pounds, is that right? Yeah, that's a lot. Do you know what I love with strawberries in England? The clotted cream. Oh yeah. I could fly to that's England right now just for some clotted cream, strawberries, and tea. So good. Good stuff. So good. The answer is B, 24 tons. If you chose 24 tons, give yourself some points. Good job. 
That's, That's a, a lot. lot of strawberries. So many. I hope you like fruit. Um, question number four, the major difference between being declared a blessed and being declared a saint um, is that the canonization requires two attested miracles. So who of the following is on the way to sainthood but has not been canonized a saint yet? Is it Oscar Romero, Pope John Paul II, Pierre Giorgio Frisati, or Mother Teresa? Is that the only difference, the one miracle versus two miracles? Yes, the only difference is a miracle. A oh. miracle. So we believe that the blessed are in heaven for sure and we can intercede, ask them to intercede for us and pray to them. Yeah. So our mystery saints could be mystery blessed. Maybe this is a little hint for you oh, well, about our mystery saint in this round. And the correct answer is Pierre Giorgio Frisati. So four questions, four hints. We talked about the mountain ranges in Italy. We talked about some coffee. We talked about strawberries, tennis, blesseds and saints. All of those are your hints. Take a few seconds to deliberate. Who do you think our mystery saint is this round for 25 points? Did you guess? Blessed Chiara Luce Badano is the correct answer. What a great saint. Tell us about her, Miranda. Yes, she is great. So she is from a quiet mountain town in Italy, like number one question told us. Um, and she grew up as an only child in a very faithful family. Um, and this faithful family took a little road trip to Rome when she was nine years old. Um, and it was an event that was hosted by the Focolare movement. So think about it as your life teen group, but... Italian. Um, it was in this youth group that she encountered Christ in a new light, um, and she had a newfound enthusiasm for her faith and sharing it. So when she came home, um, she decided to start following this call um, and give Christ's light to others. So she would visit the elderly, visit her sick classmates, meet the homeless in the streets. Um, but she really was an ordinary teenager. She loved going to coffee shops, listening to music, playing sports, and hanging out with her friends. Um, she even had a nickname, which was Luce. And in Italian, that word means light. Um, her friend said that they gave her this nickname because they were drawn to the light and the joy that she radiated. It was less about her words, but more about the way she lived that brought others to Christ. Um, when she was 17, like I said, she loved playing sports. So she was playing in a tennis uh, match when she had this really intense shoulder pain and went to the hospital for it to find out that she had an aggressive form of bone cancer. Um, like any teenager, she was super upset at first. Uh, she had sports taken away from her um, and wasn't gonna be able to play anymore. And she was really frustrated but she very quickly uh, realized that she needed to remain faithful um, and quickly learned how to say yes to Jesus in the midst of this great suffering. She started chemotherapy, lost use of her legs, but her family and her friends stayed by her side, often saying that it was her joy and her light that they needed rather than for her to have them around. Um, my biggest takeaway is that she endured her suffering and she suffered joyfully. Instead of being devastated, she said yes. Yes to Jesus and his will, even in the reality of death. She didn't stop living. She decided to unite her suffering to Christ. She said, for you, Jesus, if you want it, I want it too. Um, she's a great example to invite Christ's light to shine through you amidst the suffering, the trials, the heartache. Remember her example and that it is in him that you find your true joy. Wow, what an inspirational teenager. She's so cool. <laughs> suffering well, suffering joyfully is so hard, and Blessed Kiara really shows us how to do that. With that, we'll send it back over to Jose and Rachel for round three. So, saints sometimes can be mad funny. They got some uh -huh. like real funny stories. So, th there's, this, there's, this, there's this guy, the St. Bernard, he was a monk. And so, him and his community were actually, they're about to open up an, an, uh, a new abbey and dedicate this new church. But at the time they were doing so, they found that there was like a whole bunch of flies around and within the church. Flies are the worst. Flies are awful. They're like gnats at a barbecue. Like they're yeah. just absolute garbage. Yeah. But we thank you God for them anyways. I don't know why. Here we go. But uh, at the same time, like they were trying to swat away all these flies and then they couldn't do so. So at one point, like St. Bernard got like super tired and was just like, you know what? That's it. I just hereby excommunicate all of you, <laughs> which... <laughs> He's like, bye, That's get it. out of here. He, he, you no longer belong in this church. Yeah, patron saint of farewells, like Saint Felicia, like bye, <laughs> He's just out of there. Anyways, they had a good laugh about it. Uh huh. But then the next day, they found hundreds of dead flies. Good work. Like saint yikes, Bernard. fam. It's ridiculous. Can we can we ask him to come over to our barbecue? 
facts. Or we just, you know, ask for his intercession. That he works too. St. Bernard. Saint, he's the patron saint of flies. That's, I'm calling it right now. That's my dude. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jose. Yes, so yeah. we have a few things in front of us that yes. I want to point out really quickly. Yeah. So as Catholics, we love symbolism, right? We love little things in our lives that remind us of the faith and in particular, the saint's great intercession. And so I have this great mug. Did you know that John Paul II, before he was Pope, his name was Carlo, Car... Carol Carol? Wojtyla, you had it, you had it, you had it. (laughs) I had it, it was right here, (laughs) Carol Wojtyla. Great name. I, I can't speak a second language. Can you tell? Um, and he's a he was a really cool dude. And so this is a great depiction of him. So whenever I sip this, I remember that he is praying for us. That's what's up. Yeah. Uh, I actually have over here, which is actually my patron saint. And this is Saint Joseph, patron saint of the entire universe. And you know what mm-hmm. else? Patron saint of fathers, because I'm That's about true. to be one in a couple months. Yeah, Boom. yeah, yeah. COVID baby. So good. It's be dope. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So anyway, let's start on our next round of questions. This is round three. That's that's three. You got it. Not round six, but round <laughs> three. You what, Jose, why don't you take this question? Here we go. Take question a break. number one. So in the center of the national flag of Mexico is an eagle. Mm-hmm. What is the eagle standing on? Is it A, a tree stump, B, a flower, C, a cactus, or D, a tree branch? Love it. Jose. Yes, ma'am. Quick bonus question. Yeah. Do you happen to know what the eagle is carrying in its mouth on the Mexican flag? Uh, I have no idea. I'm not Mexican, I'm Puerto Rican, so I don't know this. <laughs> I feel like I should. A snake. Is it a snake? Yeah, it's a snake. Interesting. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So the answer to question one is actually, it's a cactus. The Ow. eagle is on a cactus. He's perched up on a cactus, baby. That, that, that would be our flag. That makes in, a lot of sense. In Arizona. Oh, We've got lots of cactus. Here. That does make it, that makes even more cacti, sense. Cacti, cacti is the plural cactus. All right, question two. <laughs> With over 83% of its population identifying as Catholic, Mexico is only second to what other country as the world's most populous Catholic country? Brazil, Italy, Spain, or France? Interesting. You know what's yeah. a really, really Catholic country? What? Poland. Oh, yes. Poland is a very Catholic country. They got so much. Carol Wojtyla uh, was Polish, in case you're wondering. You know what that means? Uh, thank you. That's right, in Polish. Boom, nailed I've it. I lived to Poland, actually. I love it. That's like Me the too. only thing I remembered. Oh, so the good. answer to that question, the most populous Catholic country in the world is Brazil. Brazil. Mm-hmm. That's a great place. Cool. Fantastic. Very cool place. Here we go. Moving on to question number three. This mystery saint was actually canonized in the year of our Lord, 2016. What other big event happened in 2016? Is it A, the Summer Olympics in London, B, Hurricane Harvey, C, Pokemon Go was created, or D, a total solar eclipse? Not of the heart. Yeah, but, uh, the, the one. Did you did you watch that? A hundred percent, yeah. I was living in Georgia at the time and we actually drove to a, to a city where it, it was, it was like enti- completely dark. A hundred percent. It was the wildest thing I had ever seen. So wild. It was amazing. All right, so the answer to that question is actually C, Pokemon Go was created. Love and a lot it. of people still play it to this day. Never I don't know did. why though. Never God bless them. It. Question number four. The Cristero War lasted how many years? 10? Three, five, or eight. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, what do we? I, I kind of want to know. Like, what do we know already about this mystery saint so far? Uh, something to do with Mexico. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Like that. Catholic. So who knew a saint is Catholic? Catholic. What? Uh, something with uh, the Cristero War. Okay. And 2016, who's came nice. 2016. So yeah. I think that's a good bit of. Pretty recently. It's a good bit of uh, clues. Tell them what's the answer to number four. All right, the answer is the Cristero War lasted for three years. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, so we know all these things about this mystery saint. Uh, you guys have some time to guess. Uh, do you have any guesses? I have one. You have one? Yeah. Yeah? Only one in particular because I you'll know, find out. Like, I know there's a great movie about this saint that I remember watching when I was in high school. So. You should also watch that once we reveal who your mystery saint is, which is Saint Jose Sanchez del Rio. It's me. It's, it's not me. It's Saint Jose Sanchez yeah, del Rio. He's that's Different not Jose. his last name. <laughs> no. <laughs> so 
Justine Jose Sanchez Del Rio was a young kid in the early eight, nine, 19th, 20th. Okay, I'm gonna have to start that over again. Okay. That's Sorry. That's good. Just reset. Stop on the camera. We can write the camera. The early 1890s. <laughs> So St. Jose Santos del Rio was a young kid in the early 20th century. He was born in Mexico in 1913 and had a great heart for the Lord. Um, in his youth, there was a Mexican dictator that came into power who introduced some articles to the Mexican constitution that greatly threatened Catholicism. And so, as a way of rebellion, a group of people came together in peaceful protest. And mm. over time, there was a lot of opposition that came from the government. And unfortunately, peaceful protest ended up turning into quite a violent war. Um, so when the war was in, in play, Jose begged his parents to let him join the rebellion. Um, and he actually went on to fight in the war and show great courage and resilience and was actually a great mentor and leader to guys much older than him. That's Oof. how mature uh, he was in his faith. Um, while in prison, he was imprisoned um, a little bit into the war after he started fighting. And while in prison, he was actually tortured um, quite gruesomely and sentenced to death. Um, now this is where the story gets a little intense, so bear with me. Mm -hmm. On his way to his death, the guards in way of mocking him cut off the soles of his feet Jesus. and made him walk to his grave with the soles of his feet cut off. Can you imagine yeah. how excruciating that would feel? Yeah. And all the while, um, they mocked him. and But Jose, because of how incredibly courageous and resilient he was, he responded only with these words, Viva Cristo Rey, yeah. which you know what that means, Jose. What does it mean? A long live Christ the King. Long live Christ the King. Viva Cristo Rey. And Jose didn't become upset or beg to be released. He just kept walking with the resilience and the determination and knowledge that like Christ is bigger than, than all of this. Um, the enemy soldiers, they promised to release him under one condition, that he would yell death to Christ our King. But Jose, nope, he wouldn't have it. He bravely shouted all the more, long live Christ our King or long live Our Lady of Guadalupe. He was then killed at 14 years old. Yeah. Um, and it is said that in his final act, he made the sign of the cross in the dirt with his own blood. How insanely Goodness. courageous and incredible. Uh, Jose was canonized by Pope Francis in 2016. So he was beatified and was a um, blessed for a long time, but yeah. recently was canonized. Um, he's an incredible saint to reflect on. Well, I would say probably 99% of us are not going to be called to a death of martyrdom. We're not going to be called to that same um, act. But he showed a kind of confidence um, in the promises of Christ <laughs> that we don't see lived out very often today. Um, we can gain great inspiration from Jose that a life of Christ is worth living and dying for yeah. um, because God loves us so much and he already won the final battle. And so Jose is an incredible saint to reflect on. Um, his story is one in a million, um, but also our stories are one in a million. Amen. So with that, that um, I'll send it off to Sarah and Miranda for round four. To start round four, we're going to let you all in on a little behind the scenes secret here at Life Team. Our friend and coworker, Josh Rogers, is our digital engagement specialist. He does videography, film editing. He's making all of these mixed episodes happen for you. And he may or may not have overslept this morning, delaying our filming schedule a little bit. So <laughs> we think he should pray to a certain patron saint. Yes, St. Vetus. Who is the patron saint of? Oversleeping. St. Vetus, pray for our friend Josh. Woo! <laughs> 
Miranda, do you have a favorite saint, patron, somebody that you like to pray to? Oh, yes. I wear a lot of saint jewelry. Um, but today I have on St. Benedict. I went to Benedict in college. So go Ravens. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. St. Gianna is one of my favorites. St. Gianna Bredamola. She is from Italy. She was in like the 1960s. So we've got photographs of her. She was a wife and a mom and a doctor. She had a couple of children. And what I love about her is she loved life. She loved things of beauty, the beauty of the mountains, the beauty of theater, the beauty of dressing up. So we're some pearls in honor of her. Her husband gave her a gold watch and pearls on her wedding day. And I just think that's the sweetest. So a little shout out to St. Gianna. She's one of my favorites. Look her up, learn more about her. She's inspirational. Shall we get into our final round of trivia and our Let's final do it. mystery saint? Question one. What two countries share a border with Italy, Switzerland, and Germany? Is it Austria and Hungary, France and Austria, Belgium and France, or Belgium and the Netherlands? A little European geography test for you. That's good. I, I don't know the answer. Really? Well, I love geography. I loved geography as a I'm kid. Thinking, I loved traveling in Europe. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking of Belgian waffles now. Oh, so. yes. Belgian waffles. <laughs> and do you ever have those um, fry cones in Belgium? Oh, yeah. They're like just yeah. cones of french fries with this amazing mayo dip. Oh, so good. I could go for one of those right I'm now. Hungry. The answer is B. France and Austria. Now that we are hungry for Belgian waffles and Belgian fry cones, France and Austria is the answer of this question. And actually, both of those countries have eight countries that border them, and they share the border that's, with Italy, Switzerland, and Germany. That's a fun yeah. European geography that's fact. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of countries. All right, moving on to question number two. The Florida Lee, as seen on the New Orleans Saints uh, football helmet, is a stylized version of what flower? Is it a tulip? a daffodil, a lily, or a lady's slipper. I didn't even realize that it was a representation of a flower. I thought it was it was too. a fancy leaf. So. Yeah, I mean, there are leaves on flowers, so yeah. it kind of yeah. works. Uh, I can't say that I'm a New Orleans Saints fan. I'm a fan of the Saints, like the Saints of our church, <laughs> but you know, New Orleans Saints never really had an affiliation with them. What's the answer, Miranda? The answer is lily. If you so, guessed lily, you 10 points for you. Congrats. Question number three, and our third hint about our mystery saint of this round. How many years did the 100 years war last? 99 years, 100 years, 106 years, or 116 years? I feel like this is a very self-evident question. You Who came think? up with these? I, I don't know. <laughs> I did So, um, I would think it would be 100 years. My history classes escaped me, those were a while ago, but probably some of you are studying this in history right now, so hopefully you know. Hopefully. Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer is 116 years. Trick question, it's not 100 years. Not sure why it's not called the 116 years war, but there you have it, the 100 years war lasted yeah. 116 years. And it took place in the 13 and 1400s. It was a war between England and France over who would take the French crown. So there you have it. Wow, all right, moving on to question number four. A burning candle flame is typically what temperature? 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 625 degrees Fahrenheit, 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, or 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very hot, all of those. That's really hot. Do you ever do that thing where you like <laughs> lick your tongue or you, you lick your fingers? <laughs> you lick your tongue. I don't think licking your tongue it, it is like possible. Sizzles. Yeah. Yeah, don't do I that. I don't like that. I prefer the Either way, stuff any of method. those degrees, I don't think that's probably safe. Yeah, no. What's the answer? It is 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. That is hot. Hot, hot, hot. So. so there's our four questions, our four hints. We talked a little bit about some countries in Europe, the fleur de lis, the Hundred Years' War, some fire. All of these hints for our mystery saint, our final teenage saint of the evening is, get your guesses in for 25 points, Saint Joan of Arc. Saint Joan of Arc is an inspirational saint. She was a teenager as well. She was from a peasant family in the French countryside. She was born in the early 1400s. So at this point, the Hundred Years' War had already been going on for quite some time. And as young as age 13, she started to hear some voices and sometimes saw apparitions of three saints, Saint Michael, Saint Catherine, and Saint Margaret. And these saints had been sent by God as messengers to tell Joan that France was to be saved and that she was the one to save it. Can you imagine being 
13 years old and being told by messengers of God that you were going to save your country from this war that it had been waging since well before you were born. Wow, I think I might not have wanted to take up that mission, but Joan was courageous. So um, as we learned about in our trivia questions, the Hundred Years' War, which lasted 116 years, um, the English had invaded and were controlling a lot of France, and in particular, this city called Orléans. And the saints revealed to Joan that she was going to lead the charge in driving the English out of France, especially from Orléans. And then she was supposed to take the crown prince to another city to be anointed as the king of France. So she, when she was 17 or 18, somewhere right around there, she did just that. She went before the king and the commanders of the army and she told them this was the message that she had from God and that she was supposed to lead the French to victory over England. And miraculously, they agreed to let this teenage girl do so because she would not relent. She knew that this is what God had called her to do, and so she stood firm in that conviction and insisted that they allow her to do it. All along the way, she was guided by this divine revelation, and she did lead the French to many victories over England in the course of about a year. Um, she was then captured and put on trial by the English where she was charged with heresy. And ultimately, because she wouldn't deny the divine revelations that she had received, she was burned at the stake at the age of 19. And I think there is so much about Joan that is impressive, but the most impressive thing to me is her conviction. She was obviously very courageous. I think you would have to be to lead 10,000 men in battle as a teenager, um, but it was her faith and her conviction and her obedience to what God called her to that I found to be so inspirational and incredible as I was learning about her. When she heard the voice of God, she did a run from what he called her to, but she acted on it with trust and courage. She would not be deterred from what it was that God had asked of her. She wouldn't be swayed despite all odds, despite ridicule, despite questioning and people doubting her. She remained steadfast and rooted in obedience to the mission that God asked her to do. She stood firm in those convictions. Not even fear of death could sway her from that. So St. Joan can inspire us to be firm in our convictions, to really be attentive, to listen to the voice of God speaking in our lives, and then to act with courage in whatever it is he's calling us to do, not letting anything shake us or deter us from completing that mission that he has for us. Hey, thanks Sarah and Miranda for all those rounds. We have come to the end of our trivia game. It makes game. me sad. <laughs> it was great. It that was pretty was a good. a lot of fun. I learned a lot. Thank yeah. you, Jose. Absolutely. So here comes the time where you look at your points and you tally all of them up to proclaim who is the winner in your youth groups. And perhaps if your youth minister has prepared ahead of time, there is a prize for you for the winner. And if not, at least know there's satisfaction in knowing that you've won. Amen. 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 And maybe if, if you have won, you may have prayed to this saint who has quite an interesting patronage. Did you know What's up? that Saint Drausnius, that's probably not how you say his name, but that's, I'm going to roll with it, Drausnius. is the patron of invincible people. Oh, I love it. So all you winners out there, like my husband, mm. who I can never beat at anything, I think he prays to St. Drusnius every single time we play games. That's the saint that every Tampa Bay sports team prays to and <laughs> there it is. getting those W's you on it, there, baby. Let's big. go. <laughs> Thank you, Tom Brady. Changing topics. <laughs> if this game and this episode has inspired in you the desire to learn more about the saints, we actually dun, 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 have a great book for you. <laughs> it's called 100 Saints. Every Catholic teen should know. And I kid you not. It has a hundred saints That's right. and a hundred saint stories in there. It's a great read yeah. and, and they're really easy stories to read. You know, sometimes you pick up a book about a saint or you go on the website and you try to look up what their life was like and it's very confusing. Have you ever had that experience? Uh, so many times. Yeah. Like you're preparing <laughs> for con your confirmation saint and you're like, I don't understand. Well, this book is very understandable and it's very entertaining. Wonderful place to start too. Wonderful. Absolutely. Another thing to reflect on, you know, we've talked about all these saints and they have lived their lives. They have gone before us, um, is that we are called to be saints. Amen. You and I, Jose, Amen. we are called to be saints. Um, and so take that to prayer with you, what that means for you. You are called to be a saint. I do want to leave you with one final fun question to think about. Let's do it. All these saints that we have 
learned about, they have a specific patronage. Now, it's not always a patronage that the church says, this is absolutely their patronage, but because of their story, we've taken them on as intercessors for mm. those specific reasons, sure. right? So you could have maybe five or 10 patrons of, you know, intercessors for cancer. Sure. But then there's some random ones like St. Jerusalem, who's the patron saint of invincible people. Love it. And so because <laughs> I'm a fan of originality. Let's do it. And thinking about my life, who, who would, I would ask myself, who would I be the patron of? If I were a saint, which I'm hoping to be, who will I be a patron saint of? Jose, do you have an answer to that? Who would I be the patron saint of? Yeah, or what would you be the patron saint of? I would be of? the patron saint of sports smack talk. That's right, because the Tampa Bay Lightning has won the Stanley Cup and the Tampa Bay Rays about to win the World Series and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are gonna win the Super Bowl in their own stadium with Tampa Bay Buccaneers legend. That's right, Tom Brady, I love it. Yep, can Thank confirm you. that would be your patron. <laughs> <laughs> However, at this point when this video drops, I predict the Dodgers will have won the World Series. Oh, so, honey, you tried. Oof. No. Yeah, I'm, I would probably be the patron saint of positivity and optimistic it. thoughts. So, hey, that fits. That's pretty good. I like it. I like it. that. All okay. Right. I would agree. Anyway, take <laughs> that to mind. Enjoy the conversations you have after this night. And, hey, go be a saint. Amen. We've loved being with you. And have a good night. Okay, I'm not sure how you did. I'm sure you did pretty well, probably a lot better than I would have done. Uh, maybe you learned some stuff about the saints today. I hope you did. And I hope this really inspires you to want to learn more about the saints. We have a book in our Life Teen store, 100 Saints Every Catholic Teen Should Know. It's filled with interesting facts and tidbits, random stories, funny stories, intriguing stories about the saints over the last 2,000 years. Pick up a copy if you want to learn more about the saints. But remember this. You are not alone. You're never alone. The book of Hebrews talks about this great cloud of witnesses. That cloud of witnesses that surrounds us are the saints, those men and women who are in heaven, focused on the Lord, but praying for you, cheering you on, cheering me on every single day in this race we call life. Now, next week, we've got a really special episode lined up. I'm very excited about it. You probably know her from her wildly, wildly popular Instagram and YouTube videos. Emily Wilson Husum is going to be with us next week with her husband, Daniel, answering questions and sharing a lot of different thoughts. You're not going to want to miss it. Thanks for joining us for episode seven of The Mix. Until next time, we're praying for you.